Hey, everybody, this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey is brought to you by our title sponsor, NHL Sense Arena. Look, we all want our kids to succeed in hockey, but let's face it, finding training that's both effective and enjoyable can be a real challenge, and not to mention expensive and a total drain on time, especially if you have to drive to the rink, uh, pay a, a private instructor. There's so many reasons that uh, money gets spent on this game. But that's where NHL Sense Arena steps in. It's a virtual reality training game that brings the rink into your home that takes off-ice training to a new reality. It's designed to improve hockey sense and IQ, something that's lacking majorly in the game today for both players and goalies. And you get unlimited access to over 100 drills and training plans from top coaches and players that can be played anytime, anywhere with drills approved by USA Hockey player and goalie development directors. Look, improving mental hockey skills at home has really never been more fun and any hockey player that uses this is going to have a blast, all right? I've used this before on my own, and it feels like you're so immersed in an arena, you sometimes forget you have a headset on. And again, it's not being on the ice, but it allows you to work on some of these skill sets like scanning, as I said before, hockey IQ, looking around the rink, making the right plays, that getting those repetitions in now as a hockey player are super important for your development. So NHL Sense Arena is giving all the listeners an exclusive offer for $50 off an annual plan when you use our code Hockey Never Stops at checkout. Again, that's Hockey Never Stops. All you got to do is go to hockey.sensearena.com. Uh, Again, that's hockey.sensearena.com. Use the code Hockey Never Stops, and you'll save $50 on your an annual plan of NHL Sense Arena. Make sure to check that out and enjoy this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey. We're back with another Our Kids Play Hockey today, a topic brought to you by you. We're talking about the importance of not paying your kids to score goals. Uh, and in this episode, we really do go into a lot of different alternatives, a lot of different methods of uh, what reward should look like in hockey from a team level to an individual level uh, to a parent level. It's a really great discussion. I'm going to say now, I say this at the end of the episode too, take a listen. We definitely want to hear what you think. Uh, you can email us at team at ourkidsplayhockey.com. You can comment on the Facebook group, Our Kids Play Hockey. Uh, but definitely want this one to become an open discussion because we know that there's probably a lot of people out there doing things that do work. Um, and we want to know what those actions are so we can share them with the parents. That's the whole point of the podcast. But the other thing, too, is maybe maybe you don't agree with us, which is totally fine as well. Feel free to comment underneath any of the episode uh, uh, teasers that we do for this. Um, or again, email us, join the Facebook group, find a way to contact us because we really want to keep growing this group. Um, and again, appreciate all of you that have keep, keep, keep giving us those five-star reviews on, uh, on iTunes and Spotify. Uh, this podcast continues to grow. We are amazed by the audience. Also, before we jump in the episode, it's early in the season. We've gotten a lot of requests for team building, uh, for team performance. Uh, head over to game7group.com. We're doing a lot of virtual team building this season where you can have one of us come on. We'll do a uh, an hour with your group, with your parents, with your coaches. Uh, and if you tell us that you're from Our Kids Play Hockey, we'll give you a nice discount on some of those packages. Again, it's over at game7group.com. Fill out any of the information there or again, email us at team at ourkidsplayhockey.com and just say, hey, we're interested in some team building. Can we see the options? And we will get those right over to you. But without further ado, let's jump into this episode today about why you should not be paying and your kids to score goals. What are you doing? Here we go. It's Mike and I, our kids play hockey. Hello, hockey friends and families around the world, and welcome to another edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. Today's topic is brought to you by you. We asked you for some topic ideas. Mike, I was telling the group, I said, you know, we have plenty of ideas to talk about. We have plenty of topics. It's really endless. It's an infinite game, but we wanted to get the audience involved because, you know, while our minds are where their minds are at, we know they have questions. One came up today uh, about the problem with parents paying their kids to score goals. So we're going to do a whole episode today and really break it down actually into four segments about why you should never pay your kid to just score goals. That, that is a horrendous idea. Uh, we're going to discuss that. Then we're also going to uh, talk about alternatives, right? Because I think it's, mm -hmm. it's BS when anybody comes up with a, hey, don't do that, but they don't provide an alternative. So we're going to have some of those alternatives today. And also just take a general look into, you know, the, the the reward systems, I'll call them, in hockey, right, about whether it's individualistic or from a team front, about rewarding the kids for doing things. But I do want to start off with this because I have, I have strong feelings about this, that you should, yeah. my belief, my opinion, Mike, you should never be paying your kid only to score goals. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, I don't even know why it's a question. 
but it's uh <laughs> I, I mean I, I, I'm, I'm i'm actually a little baffled but yeah why why shouldn't we pay our youth players to perform athletic activities that positively uh, affect the team and their own, you know, their own, I guess the, their, their own skill development. So I, I don't know if that, if that, that's a reward, I guess, if you're looking at it as an incentive, if you're looking mm -hmm. at it as a motivational piece, not sure if the financial transaction part is, is the best way to go. Yeah. And, and look, I will say this too, because I get a little miffy in the, in, in the, in the middle of this, I, I don't like it when parents pay for goals. I'm not necessarily against, paying for more well-rounded things like points or great play. I don't know if paying in cash is the right reward. I think there's a lot of different ways, uh, especially at the younger ages, you can earn something. But I want to get this just off my chest, that I have seen parents pay their kids for goals, and you are hurting not only your own child's development, but the entire team. Um, and it's because of the obvious. If your kid is only focused on scoring goals, they're never going to pass the puck. They will only make plays that are conducive to leading to them scoring. They may even yell at their teammates for not, not passing them the puck. You're, you're just creating a <laughs> show for your kid, for lack of a better word, if you do that. Now, with that said, there's more. There's levels to this. Then the next question will be, well, what if I pay for goals and assists? Okay, look, that's better, but here's the problem with that. Um, what about your defense? What about your goaltenders? You know, I, I had a player um, on my son's squirt team over the weekend he made the third assist on several goals, right? And what I mean is he set up the play, he started the play, he brought it out, offense to offense, goal. And he gets no no, uh, no credit for that kind of third assist. <laughs> so it's like now he he's not earning money. So you just take it away from the team environment when you reward kind of these things, um, especially if it's every single one, right? right? Mike's ready to go. I charged you up. I'm going to say, isn't the, isn't the hard hat and the golden hammer and, uh, you know, the, 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 the the token at the end of a game reward right. enough. I mean, so, <laughs> yeah. so I'm, and I'll, I'll, and I will be honest with you in I've, I've been coaching and directing and been a part of many teams for over, I mean, for over 40 years. And I've, I've never come across a parent that I know of. Now maybe it happened. I've never heard of it, never encountered it, never was in the room when a transaction happened <laughs> where a parent paid a player to do anything. Even headhunt, uh, like go out and kill like somebody, it. you know, go out and go out. And now, again, I, I guess maybe I'm lucky or maybe I've just. Mike, said, oh, your name's Mikey oh. Benelli. This stuff happens under the table, buddy. They don't do it in the locker room after the game. Oh, yeah, my, well, my little guy was at the Italian festival yesterday and I said, <laughs> hey, did you get did you get into your roots a little bit? You know, <laughs> you know like, did you did you make any bargains, you know, for anything you could get on, you know, in, in the back yeah. alley? But I think it's, listen, if you're paying a, any kid, soccer, lacrosse, hockey, if you're paying a player, if you feel you have to get to the level of paying somebody right. to to do something you want on on the field or on the ice, I don't know. I just I I just think that's I'm not even gonna say it's crazy because maybe there is and, and maybe we'll get some comments like, hey, I did it and this is what happened to my son, and then after he get drafted, he paid me back. Great. I think that's all. all, well, that's let, all. Here, let me let me read to you because because again, this episode was born from our group. And uh, well, there's, a, there's a chat going on in the group about episode topics. So I'm just going to read some of this. These will remain anonymous. But yeah. um, it says uh, th this person's talking about ages four to six. So we're not even talking older yet. Did they even I overheard, count the money given to them? Well, I, I overheard a parent offering their kid $10 for a goal. By, yeah. by the way, rates have really gone up if you're getting 10 yeah, I mean, for a geez. goal. Man, uh, I didn't even get 10 bucks for allowance. <laughs> um, and, again, they said we've talked about This was with the soccer team. Dollars. Right. And yeah. then uh, someone said, I remember you guys talking about that, too. We should talk about the perspectives on this. We need to go through this. It's crazy. The child was offered ten dollars. So, Mike, I'm going to tell you. And, and again, this goes all the way back to when I played. I, I, I know this happens again. A lot of times the, the, the transaction, as you said, takes place well after the game in the car um, or mm -hmm. something like that. And, and look, we're going to get into this today. I'm not against reward systems. OK, but you got to you got to have a clue about what you're doing. Because again, look, especially if your kid is in a younger age group, I'm going to tell you right now the biggest dilemma I see at the older age groups is that we see extremely talented players with no brain for the game. And it's incredibly frustrating as a coach when a player can, can lacrosse with the puck around the ice but cannot figure out a basic system, right? Yeah. So when you're paying for only a skill set, you're robbing the kid of their ability to develop both mentally, both physically, 
right? I, I mean, look, I'm, I've, I've used this stat all the time. I'm going to use it again. If Wayne Gretzky never scored a goal his entire NHL career, he would still be number one all-time in points because of his assist account, all right? So from an offensive standpoint, assists and goals are both important. Do yeah. not rob your kid the chance to learn how to pass the puck. It is an insanely, incredibly valuable skill set. Right, but so is gapping, and so is yeah, I, know, I was going to go there. Yeah, and so is yeah. all this other stuff. So if you're if you're a, the father of a defenseman, you say, listen, I'm going to give you a dollar for every shot you get on net. Like that's my incentive to you. Like I don't know a, a reward, a financial reward. I mean, aren't we doing enough for our kids? We're buying them sticks and skates <laughs> and helmets. Come on, Mike, you know? what are you talking about? Oh, God, I mean, it's like it's like uh, it, it gets uh, you know to, to a financial reward is tough. Now, if you have a reward system within your team that right. can, can identify players strengths and and good positive things like you know you know i see like some teams give a guy like a like a like a give a dog a bone award like oh that's our hardest working player somebody that never gives up on the puck like we're going to recognize that player or i mean me as a, as a youth hockey coach forever and a high school coach and a prep school coach have given out you know uh, you know award stickers on helmets and right. those kids earn those things i mean you've ever seen ohio state hockey i mean it's like it looks right. like it's a football team right just award after award after award and they're rewarding the pl- recognizing great plays right whether it's a goal an assist a, a hit a, a you know a back check and that i you know that i know works but I don't. But I guess I'm hung up on is the actual financial piece. Well, here's what I'll say. You, you know, most of the time when I see this happening, there is no internal team reward system, right? So, so you're skipping ahead, but that's fine, Mike. Like, I think it's it's very valuable for coaches at any age group to create some sort of internal uh, reward or tracking system in which the kids can kind of police themselves and create some healthy competition. So, for example, I'll go from the top level down. I remember I was working with with a, a pro team. And we actually had the players create, like, you know, what are the what are the stats that we want to follow that you guys can compete against each other? And goals and assists were not even on the list. Um, I mean, at right. one point, you know, plus minus was there. That's that's a, I mean, there's always debate over whether that that's a fair stat or not. But th- they would go through like, uh, you know, great breakout passes would be one, right? Or or uh, game breakers where a pass would be stolen or intercepted, um, and they kept to it. They were accountable to it, and the internal uh, healthy competition with that was reward enough. You know, you wanted to win that every single game. And obviously it was a rising tide to lift all ships. Now, when you get down to the squirt level, the might level, uh, even the peewee level, Mike, you said earlier, get the hard hat, you know, get the, get the defensive player of the game, you know, and you can change the meaning of those rewards throughout the season, uh, depending on what it is as a team that you want to get better at. I mean, I'll tell you what, I have seen kids vie for those helmets. I mean, they want it, right? Kids want to be rewarded, right? It's just, I don't know if cash is the best reward. Mike, you said a good point. I mean, the sport's already expensive enough. Um, you know, not, I mean, not imagine, to mention. Imagine, you know, a kid, imagine a kid going into the locker room and is that, you know, there's a dad out there and he's like, okay, he goes, he goes, he goes that was a great shift, great shift. Here you go. Yeah, and it, yeah. I mean, I just think it's so weird that it would be a financial transaction, but I guess it would just be as weird if a kid came off the ice and dad gave him a brand new uh, stick. Say, hey, here's your, here's your brand, you know, 300, you earned that $350 stick today. So I yeah. guess it's just a matter of, if it's if it's in the context of a team award and everybody is participating in this, yeah that's different you know yeah. i know my, i know when, when i was growing up i remember my father uh, on one of the boards he was on you know for hockey and it came up and this kind of subject came up about all oh, these kids don't pass i said well we're not going to recognize goal scorers anymore we're going to now start the playmaker award so the kid that makes the most plays and then you know and it, and, and it actually became a problem right because the kids weren't shooting they're like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna dish the puck off to this like okay we gotta stop passing so much it's great to have you know all these plays but right. there's a balance and an understanding of what the reward is to benefit the team right. overpassing doesn't benefit the team underpassing doesn't benefit the team it's it's a strategy i get it to get the kids to be motivated we're talking about in, in this setting a four to six year old mm. I, I, you know i get i guess w- would the kid be just as motivated to say, Hey, you score today. We're going to Carvel. Like, like when you start adding these pieces to the, to the kids, then where, where do they find their own motivation then? Right. Like where is the line that, that they're, that they should be motivated. I mean, they're a child. They should be motivated already to go out and participate. If they're not all the money in the world, is not going to help you sustain that motivation, <laughs> you know, over the course of their career. 
I was going to say too, I'm not even sure a four-year-old can understand how much money $10 is. They, they might as well be a thousand dollars at that point, you know, but and, well, and maybe it, that's a great motivator. Maybe that's a yeah. great motivator, but I, I would think that getting, go, go, you know, getting, getting the chance to go to the Lego store after a game might be just as good as a motivator. Well, here's I don't the other thing too. want to use that as a tool to motivation. I, I, I don't think it's a good idea. I, I'm not, I'm not for it in any way. You know, here's the other thing too. We got, got to mention this too. Like, um, if wind gets out to the team, which it will, if you have kids, um, the, the other problem I have with this, and, and some people may scoff at this, some people might not, but you know, it, it's great if you can give your kid $10 a game, not every family might be able to afford that. Right. And it, it's like, you know, now you're putting a kid and a family in a position that, that's a tough conversation. Well, Johnny gets $10 when he scores. Like I would never want to put a fellow parent in that position where they have to explain to their child why they can't afford to do something like that. That that's just wrong to me. Um, here's the other oh, thing too. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry. No, no, I'm just saying, and you're in the same context. Are we, as the same family rewarding their kids for A's on, on. Well, on and that, months? I love it, Mike. That's the next note I have here. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I was going to say, that, where's that stop? Like, oh my God, you know, you did such a great job sitting in the car the whole way on our trip. That's, right. that's 10 bucks. Well, and that, that's my next topic. You know, what are we rewarding? And what are better reward systems? I can say this. I'm going to make this pretty much a statement for me. If you are not rewarding good grades, but you are rewarding goals, your priorities are screwed. All right? Like, it, it cannot really, be that way. Unless your kid's a really good player, don't worry about the grades so much. <laughs> he's really, he's earning 40 to $50 a game. Yeah. And maybe. Yeah, that's that's no. fair. It's your money. Go with it. <laughs> yeah, go with it. No, listen, I've always had this issue with uh, the academics sometimes come second. Student athlete, student comes first. It's cliche, but it's true. If you're not willing to reward your kid's effort at school, um, I don't know how to say this nicely without cursing. It's just, you know, I mean, it's a train wreck. You're going to make a train wreck when they get older. They're going to have an inappropriate and, and, and a mutated understanding of what earning actually is. Right, which we already have enough of a problem with right now uh, in society about just, you know, action creates reward, right? Or effort creates reward. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to say, if you're not willing to, to uh, reward academics, do not reward hockey. Don't, it's just not a good idea. Um, and, and as we said, going back to kind of hockey a little bit, um, if you're not willing to reward character, if you know, like character is important to me. I've I've told my kids many times that, I mean, I love I love when they get points. Don't get me wrong. I love when my son has a great game in net, but it's their character that I'm watching. It's how did you respond to the adversity? How did you respond when they scored on you and the game was tied and you felt that pressure? And then you know, I'm really proud of you, son, that I saw you feel it for a second, and then you you you, you practiced the play that you missed, and then you got right back. I'm really proud of you for that. That's a reward. Right. You know what? Let's go get a Slurpee because I'm really proud of you for that. Right. And Slurpees don't cost ten dollars, by the way. But yeah, right, but most also make sure we're getting a Slurpee when we get our butts kicked. Absolutely. And there yeah. was good effort, right? And there but the was, character, that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, the effort was there. You know, I think that's where I think that's where parents, you know, we all get caught up, right? In a win, everybody's like everybody's, you know, jubilant and and happy. And then when in a loss, it's like the most like you can't even talk to your child in yeah. the home. And you should it's bring like, them oh, up. You should bring them up. Mike, I'm going to tell you this. I, I, I will not say the team, uh, an opposing team this week. I saw it. and I, It's amazing to me that this still happens. I saw a parent screaming at his son, whose team had just lost, in the lobby in front of all the other parents, just screaming at him about how he should have played. And I saw the kids storm off and the dad walking behind him, yelling at him. And it's just like, I, I still can't believe that I see that at a rink. It's incredible to me. And, th and this kid just lost. Like, I just, it boggles my mind that anyone would think that after a loss, the thing the kid would want to hear is their dad or mom screaming at them about what they should have done. Right. It, it, talk yeah. about a reward. Yeah. I mean, and that's, and then we've, we've had these discussions, you know, with so many different people on, on offline and online, you know, just about like that parent. Right. And, and that, you know, we want to, a lot of that's just culture and that a lot of that's, you know, we can nip that in the bud beginning of the season or the beginning yeah. of our, experience with parents but I, and i think this thing is the same i think having a discussion with a group saying because this is how i would approach it if i was a coach i'd be like listen if you're paying your child for points or goals or anything really yeah. in, in the game you're undermining the team's ability to be a team 
and that ultimately will hurt your child. Like if you can all understand the context that it, that the more we can uplift your own kids, it's going to uplift the team. And the more they understand the team concept, it also helps them, you know, and I think that's where, you know, that's where it's really important for all of us to understand that in the team concept, if you get outside that, then I don't know. The, the I guess I'm just, I'm more hung up on the money, yeah. but, <laughs> um, but I think, but I think I'm hung up too on the reward system outside of the team. Right. And I guess it happens. I, I get it. I mean, you know, privately, if you go home and you have a, you have a matrix board on your, you know, in the kid, in the kid's room and, and you're keeping stat, you know, I, I had a conversation with a mom literally this past weekend, uh, having a debate about her son's goals against average posted, you know, uh, percentage because it was wrong. <laughs> I'm like, your son is 10. Yeah. I said, I said, and nobody cares. And if you care, great. Then have that discussion with your son that they got it wrong, but keep your own internal stats. If you want to do that, but I'm not participating in that. Like I'm not checking on whether that was a shot or not. I'm not having a debate on whether a puck that hit a post should count against him or not. That's right. not my, I'm no, not, the, not at, not I'm at not that a, age. But, but, I, uh... and, and really at a, mo a lot of ages, I mean, there comes to the point. So I think it, in this context, I mean, if I, I, I'll have to get in the chat later. Is that is that we just got to, you know, we, I, I respect reward systems. I respect the motivational piece. Um, I, if you're if your players on the sideline and you want them, you know, you need a big goal at the end of the game and you're going to, you know, you're going to kind of, you know, throw a hundred dollar bill up in the air and be like, who <laughs> wants it? Who wants this hundred dollar bill? Yeah. I, I just think it undermines the the the, the team concept of what it we're totally trying to do. Does. No, it, and it, it really it just gives a false does. sense of what what is the reward? Isn't the reward winning and competing, right? And, and and trying your best and then being recognized for that? And I guess if giving cash is recognized, if that's your recognition tool, I don't know. I, I, I just don't see. I just don't see how that works long term. Well, and again, in a few minutes, I'm going to go over some of the, the reward systems we do at our home that are not cash based, just so we can can share some different perspectives. But um, I want to stay on this undermining the team thing for a minute, because, you know, here's the here's the devil's advocate um, thing here. Someone's going to say, well, like, yeah, well, I do good. My job, I get a cash reward. I get a bonus, you know, and and look, like, yeah, look that's true sometimes. But, you know, I, I can make the argument as someone who works in corporate American team building, that's not the best reward system, <laughs> even in corporate America. Like, look, don't get me wrong. It is always nice to get a bonus. Always. I'm not, not undermining getting a bonus at your job for, for stellar work. Okay. But a great management team will find a way to motivate everybody. And again, the rising tide lifts all ships and then everyone gets the rewards from that. Right now, again, I'm not being specific because depending on your vertical and your job, this can change drastically about team performance. But the point is this, in every single, every single <laughs> example that I've worked with, when the team morale, the team building, the trust, the accountability, the communication is at the highest levels, everyone ends up winning. The bottom line of the company goes up, the bottom line for the employees go up, everyone wins. The morale is up. You you want to show up every day, all right? I I I would never want to put another kid in a position of showing up to the rink upset that player X gets money and I don't. I mean, it's just you're you're undermining the entire thing, and you're giving your kid an unrealistic expectation of life. What happens? Here's the here's the other now. Here's the other side of that. What happens when they graduate college or whatever? They go to work and they don't get rewarded every single time they do a good job. Every day when I did my job, I did good today. Great. Yeah, that's why you get a salary now, right? But I want the extra. I want the extra. You're creating a very, very unrealistic version of the world. Now, again, we talk about this, Mike, about having to earn things, right? This is really the message I give my son every day. You know, and, and again, we, we've heard this reported out in, in the masses here. Like, it's not a good idea just to tell your kid, hey, you're really smart. You're really smart. You shouldn't tell your kid you're really smart. All right. Same thing as like, hey, you're a goal scorer. You're a great goal scorer. Talent is not enough if you're not willing to put in the work ethic. And I will, I, I'm going to tell you this. I will usually take the kid, almost always take the kid with the high work ethic over the high talent because I know they're coachable. I know I can mold them and I know I can teach them. Whereas the high talent kid usually can only do one 
dimensional plays, all right? And they phase out, right? I want the kid who's going to expand their game. So I'm telling you again, parents, if you're only paying for one specific thing or even two specific things, you are going to stunt the growth of your child, both as a player, as a teammate, and as a functional member of society, right? It just doesn't work that way. And I, and again, I've said ad nauseum to my own son that, you know, you're, I said this just like, you're very smart, but that's not enough. You have to work hard. You have to learn that piece that the effort and the earning of things is just as important as your ability to just know it. Go ahead, Mike. And I'll, I'll come back to kind of our reward systems. No, no, you're you're right. I mean, and again, there 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 there'll be listeners and there'll be people chiming in that that don't have that experience. They'll say, "I paid my kid all the way through. They're 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 a well functioning person of society. They're well centered. They are rich." Now. I hope those people do comment. I would love to hear from you. And, both and, of and you. yeah, me too. I'd like to hear from both <laughs> yeah. you people. But I think it's like I think it's I think it really it comes down to you know really looking at the big picture and then playing the ROI of what is going to produce the best for you mm. in all the aspects of why we play sport. And I, and I think this goes back to a whole other underlying issue that we we're, we're not playing sport to teach all these things anymore. We're teaching sport to progress in the sport right, <laughs> as right. opposed to, as opposed to getting all the lessons learned from sport. Um, you know, I, I can't tell you how many, I've been, I've been doing these, these learn to play programs. And a lot of the people that help in the learn to play programs are, are retired or, or you know, they, they finished their college careers, uh, players, and they're not professional athletes. These are, these are guys and girls that just played college hockey at a, at a really high level. And now they're, you know, quote unquote, giving back and helping. Mm -hmm. And it's the same message all the time. Like, like I learned all this other stuff through the sport. I want to give back. Never. Mm -hmm. it, I never, I've never had a conversation with any of these people about the championships and the and the and the other rewards. The reward was the game, and the ones that give back and help. That's what they remember, and that's what they right, talk right. about. And I think that's where we want to set our kids up for. The reward is the game. The reward is the fact that you got to go to a rink, you got to play on a Sunday morning, and you got to compete, win or lose, and you learned that there's that there's a reward system based off of effort. And, you know, and based off of, you know, what you want to put into it. And there's also a reward system knowing that you did all that effort all week. You worked hard. You did everything you were supposed to do. You lost, but you were able to come out of there and know that the reason you lost was this, this, and this, and this is what you can improve on. And this is now a new goal and a new way we can approach the next competition. None of that has anything to do with money. <laughs> it really doesn't have anything to do with, re you know, external rewards. And I think once you start using, like a reward system and it's based off of like a, like a physical object or, or, or financial, um, you know, uh, windfall. I don't know if that's sustainable and I'm, I'm not even sure if it's healthy. Well, and again, I'm going to dive into that in a second and how we do it. Cause here's, here's my thoughts on that, Mike. I think that I don't think there's anything wrong with teaching young kids and adults, young adults that, Hey, if you put forth the effort, and you do a good job, there are rewards that come with that. And I think there's a lot of different ways to do that. And like you said, it doesn't always have to be cash-based. It's just important to understand you work hard, you'll earn something, because that, that's how our country works for the most part. But it's not always fair, but but that's the truth. Um, well, that's how, you, that's yeah. how I've experienced human motivation to work. Like, you know, right. if you want a little bit more, you know, Xbox time, then do right. this. Right. You know? But and I wanted to make, you just made me think of a, a great book, not that we have a book club here, but um, you reminded me, you know, I read Mike Rizzioni's book I'm looking at here. It's called The Making of a Miracle. And the reason I'm bringing that up here, and it's a great weekend weekend read for all of you out there if you want to get it, um, is Rizzioni just talks about his life kind of growing up in the Northeast. And he just had nothing. He lived in a house with a thousand people. I'm exaggerating, obviously. And it's just, it, the way, I remember reading this every step of the way. He just thought, oh, I'll never, I'll never make it beyond this. I'll never make it beyond this. And then he's like, I can't believe I made it to college. I'll never make it beyond this. And it just talks about, you said, the reward is playing the game that, you know, even just making the Olympic team barely, you know, wow, I never thought I would do this. It, it, it's just a really great read to kind of humble the roots of hockey at that time. Again, you know, you're talking the 60s and the 70s in New England, but um, making of a miracle is a great read. Now, let, let, look, let's talk about reward system. I'm going to share one that I'm doing in my house right now um, that I actually actually saw this on an Instagram post and we adopted it and it's worked um, where, you know, 
think about your home. Like, hey, if you clean your room, I'll give you money, right? If you if you do these chores, I'll give you an allowance, right? We, we all had that growing up. I get an allowance growing up for doing the stuff around the house. Um, but I read this great one and we've just adopted it where books read are a currency in the house. Okay, so when my son, he actually came up to me, he was talking about getting a new piece of equipment. And um, he said, well, can I get this? How much does it cost? And I said, knowing this, I said, you know what? If you read this many books, you can get that. He wanted a, uh, he wanted a um, sense arena. All right. I want a sense arena, Mike. I want to use that thing. All right. VR hockey. I want that. All right. I'm getting older. I could use that. But you know what? It's going to cost you this many books. All right. And this is what I love about it. A, from the book standpoint, we're, we're, we have a mix here, right? You have to read some biographies. You have to read something that's going to give you some information, give you some worth. We've also thrown in like, look, if you want to read kind of a comic book type book, that that will count too. But it's, it, you know, it can't be all the books you're reading, right? So we have a good mix of like for every five books, you can read a comic book and it'll count, right? But the idea is that, yeah, if you want the sense arena, it's going to be uh, 40 books, right? And, and this is my kid's reading level where he's at. Obviously, every parent's got to change this up. Like for my daughter who cannot really read yet, it's, well, we're going to read books together, right? So we, we still do it at that age. And this is what I love about it is it teaches him patience that, you know, now there's no immediate gratification here. You're going to have to take the time to read these books. I also love the accountability. You can read these books as fast as you want. If you want to come home from school every day and read two books a day, you'll get this thing by Hanukkah Christmas time, right? If you don't want to do that, you know, you, you'll get it by the end of the year. And if you don't do it, you just won't get it. So I'm teaching the worth of, yes, you can earn something by, by doing these things. And the things that I'm asking you to do, son, daughter, is to get knowledge in your mind, to become smarter. Now I'm rewarding the academics and I'm rewarding the effort to get something for hockey, right? With the understanding of in our house, hockey is awesome. We love hockey in our house. It's a hockey house, but hockey is not the dictatorship of what you earn. Your ability to do these things are, right? I'll also note to the parents, and this is some great advice I got, uh, great advice I got um, as my kids got older. Uh, and I just share this advice with a young parent. Your kids can do more around the house than you think they can, huh. starting at a much younger age. Your kids can do laundry by like five or six years old. You just don't really, now it needs to be a little bit supervised, all right? They can feed the pets. They can wash the dishes. They can clean their rooms far earlier than you think they can. To me, these are more valuable ways, Mike, to earn something, even if it's cash, than scoring a goal because they they absolutely translate to the ice, right? Student, athlete, right? If your kid understands how to learn that, wow, we value learning in our family, what do you think that is gonna translate to on the ice? I also have the opportunity now Mike, you'll love this, of, well, you can read a magazine or a book about goaltending, son. That'll count if you want to learn more about that position. Right. Or if you want to learn more about playing off, and you can read this book about that. I, I, again, a little age-specific here. My son's 9 or 10, okay? But you got to find a different way to reward. The, the other thing, Mike, and I'll throw it back to you, is that, um, look, cash is king. I get it. I, I, but at the same time, it's like with a baby or, or, or a toddler, I should say, you just got to kind of find out what they want. And then you can kind of get whatever you want out of them. So another way to do this is if your kid wants a new stick, well, let, listen, show me five great character plays on the ice or the next five character plays you make. Um, and that can be anything by celebrating with a teammate who scores a goal to actually making a great play, you know, collectively, you make five great plays and they, or you have to make five different plays, five different types of situations we'll talk, right? I just think these are better methods. They take a little bit of thought, all right? But but the goal, Mike, at the end of the day, and I'm going to throw this back to you, the goal is you should be rewarding your son or daughter for becoming a more well-rounded person. And if that translates to the game, great. If it doesn't, fine, all right? But like, if, if you're creating a better person, you will create a better hockey player. You have my word. All right. If, if, if you create a one dimensional player and in squirt, they they go to town and they lead the league in points. My gut tells me if that kid does not expand their game, they are not going to be able to do that much longer.
It, it, they will, <laughs> if your kid only shoots, they will figure it out. All right. It is not hard to defend against somebody like that. Yeah. Mike, that was my five minute pedestal. It's probably more like 10. I'm going to throw it back to you. No, no, I think you've actually changed my mind about this whole thing now. <laughs> so if you're paying your kids across the board, a reward system, then maybe I have no problem with you paying your kid to score goals and get it. I, I I don't know. I mean, I think it's just if you're if you're listen, if that's something that's motivating to your child in their real, regular everyday life, every like who knows? Maybe this kid that this four year old soccer phenom gets paid for taking the garbage out and, and cleaning up and making yeah. sure they don't leave crumbs in the back of the car. And I don't know. So if that's a motivator and that's a piece of the motivation, I, you know, and, and if you don't like like. If it's not pinpointed to goals, like that's the only way. Like if I come back and I'm like yeah, best, yeah. best back checker and I knock the puck out and save a goal, that to me is as important as scoring. Then you know, if you have a reward system that motivates your kid, I, I you know what? If it's cash, great. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I think it's I think it's what I, I think it where it where it gets a little sticky is how how do you regulate that? Like where like even when you do home you know, chores. Like I, I'm sure there's a lot of people who say, well, why would I pay my kid to do a home chore? They should be doing home chores. Like right. they should be learning how to do those things without money. Yeah, They're part of the family. And that's not unfair. That's not yeah, an unfair statement. So, yeah. So it all depends on your, yeah. like where you are in your family. If you, if you're choosing that you feel a good motivator is some kind of external gifts, whether it's cash, sense arenas, you know, new sticks, new sneakers, whatever it is. Say, Hey, listen, I, we're rewarding you for being um, for your your effort in life, whether it's taking up the garbage, helping cook, feeding the dog, cleaning your room, scoring goals, yeah, doing great make it a lacrosse well thing, make it a full person. So I think if you're doing it that way, I really think my mind could be changed. I think if you're doing it in a in a way where it's a holistic approach to everything you do in your life with your child, then that's fine. But if it's the other way, if it's like I only pay you to score goals. I could care less if you're a good person. I really don't care if you clean your room. I don't care if you're a bad teammate. I only care that you score goals. Then, then that's where that's where I kind of draw the line. That's where I'm a hundred percent with you. And I think everybody would say that. But I, 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 well, I, I guess, Mike, I'm telling you, this happens. I'm t- I'm 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 actually yeah. glad you've never seen it because I've seen it, and I'm telling you, it happens. And I have seen it's parents. Crazy, I've never seen it, and I never experienced it because I wasn't I couldn't score goals. So I I have I have been on teams where a, a player did not pass to me because they they wanted to make money. And, and again, <laughs> look, I don't blame like now that I'm older, I don't really blame that kid because I understand now he was he was he was motivated incorrectly. Imagine having the ability to think that though. Look look at you look look off of you and be like, well, I could score here and get five. I'll, I'll take you one further. Imagine losing a game because of that. Yeah. And I'm speaking from personal experience. <laughs> All right. Like, like you took the position yeah. away from us to win the game because you wanted to make some money, you know, right. and, and look, look, I don't want to quote wall street about greed for lack of another word is good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Look, 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 greed. We all, we all experience greed. This is, this is actually an important thing to say. Um, I, I think one of the brilliant things about America is that, you know, greed is an inherent trait in all humans. We all experience it. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's wanting to spend time with your kids. Sometimes it's just doing what you want to do. But we all experience it on some level. And I yeah. think that, that the genius of America is, and, and again, this gets this gets uh, mutated all the time, but is they took that inherent trait and they turned it into something where it could grow, right? That if I work harder than you, I will get ahead. Now, again, that's a very baseline. I don't want to get into politics. It's a very baseline version of this. It's not that simple. But the truth is we all have greed, including our children. How you monetize that greed as a parent is really important. I think that's what we're trying to say here. Like, Mike, another one, you just made me think of this. Another reward system would be almost like a bingo card. I mean, you got to be careful once they get close to bingo. But the idea, you said it, like, look, okay, you know what? Get a goal, get an assist, get a good breakup play, get a good defensive play, take out the trash, do your laundry, read a book. These are all on your bingo card, right? And if you get any 10 of these things, you'll get a reward. Right. The other thing I've got to tell you about the, the book system was that one of the things we're going to do is we'll buy the reward ahead of time and put it on the shelf and say, yeah, when you get to 20 books, there it is. We'll, I'll hand it to you right away. You can have it right away. All right. I think I got to say this, too. Just just having traveled, <laughs> you know, the reward for some kids might be you get to have dinner tonight. Right. Like, like we always got to keep perspective in mind here 
that there are families that are far more financially fortunate than other families. All right. And I, and I, and again, I'm not saying that you need to make decisions based off of where somebody else might be, but having that perspective, I think is very important. All right. And understanding that, you know, there are people out there where dinner might be the reward. You do your chores, you get to eat tonight. All right. I've seen that too. So again, rounding this out, because I'm not trying to guilt trip anyone listening to this episode. All right. I think we're in agreement. Paying for any singular aspect of the game is incredibly wrong. Like, don't do it. You are going to hurt your kid. Okay. You're, you're going to hurt a lot of things with that. There are acceptable ways to reward. And the key word here for me, again, is to earn something through work and understand the patience involved. And again, you know, it seems like the older I get, the less patience there is. You know, everybody wants immediate gratification. If you want this large gift, you have to earn it and it might take months and that's okay. You don't get your first car the day you get your license most of the time. You got to earn that, right? So it, it, you're teaching these fantastic life skills. The other thing too, Mike, just thinking from hockey, it's like, you know, if your kid or a kid is not talented enough to really become a goal scorer, reward the process of them learning to score goals. Hey, let's go outside and take 50 shots a day or 100 shots a day together. I'll help you. And if you do that for two weeks, we'll have a reward because you put the work in. I don't even care if you score a goal in the game, right? But you put the work in and I'm proud of you. I'm going to reward that. It could be a Slurpee. It could be an Xbox. That's up to all of you as individuals on how you want to reward your kids. I'm not going to judge anybody for the type of reward. Okay. But earning something, not just getting something. You know, here's the other one, Mike. I got to say this. What happens when, when uh, you know, Rebecca comes down the ice, dekes out seven players, including her own teammates that got in the way, does a dipsy do backhand passes the cross the ice to Johnny, who just taps it in the net, and he gets the reward when Rebecca did all the work. <laughs> just, you know, like, that's another we'll reason why her, you should do her, this. Give her, give her. Give her five bucks then. Yeah. No, Johnny's going to do it. Like, listen, I really appreciate you making the pass. I'm going to give you 20%. You do that again, I'll make it 30%. Yeah, maybe, yeah, you, just, you could start your own incentive <laughs> uh, internally into the team to get your pucks to you. Like but I, dolls. I, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 listen, I, I like, I, you know, I like reward systems. I just think they have to be, uh, you know, set up for the age and, and like right. more appropriately, you know, helping the full team. Win. I think if it's if it's uh, an award system given from the team perspective, where a coach can, you know, make sure they massage that and have it given to kids at strategic times during the season and during weekends and during games and practices, where you can motivate everyone as opposed right. to just your the one kid that scores all your goals, which happens all the time, right? You all depend on one kid, but really it is a team, and you want to, in, 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 you know, make sure you're you're incentivizing everyone to especially to, in hockey to get yeah. better. Um, but again, like I said, the more I think about it and look, I, I'm actually eager to hear some more comments or see some more comments that, you know, maybe it does work in some places and yeah, and if it is working, is it working across the board? Is it working when you're home, uh, in the car, at school, in sports, if it's working everywhere and that's the way you're doing it and it's working, then, then that's great. Um, I just haven't seen it. Well, look, I'll say this on that note. The best thing you can do if you're listening to this episode is, uh, is write us an email or go to the Facebook page and tell us what's working or what's not, because that's the whole point of the podcast, right? Is that we want to share what's working. I shared what I do with my kids. Let us know what you do with your kids because our kids play hockey. Sorry, I had to say it. But no, again, before I close that, if you do want to share that, you can email us team at ourkidsplayhockey.com or go to the Facebook page. It's a private group, Our Kids Play Hockey. Uh, we do vet everyone that comes into that group. You, you can't get in without answering a couple of questions. So it's been a really good group. Mike, just rounding this out, uh, the points today. We're agreeing. Don't pay your kids for goals, right? Coaches out there, we, it's beneficial to create team-based rewards for your team. It can be very intricate. It can be a chart, like I said, where the, the athletes create their own rewards and they compete against each other, all the way down to just having a, a, a defensive and offensive player of the game with the helmet. Um, I think those are important. Parents, nothing wrong with uh, taking the time to create your own reward system at home. I think as long as there's earning potential within that, that is a well-rounded approach that maybe doesn't just take hockey. 
I'm going to reiterate this again. If you are not willing to reward academics, do not reward hockey. I'm, I'm saying that as a coach right now, not as a dad. Do not do it. You're going to screw your kid up. <laughs> I just, I'm telling you, don't do that, right? Sorry, I'm taking the stand on that. Um, and again, we want to know what you think. If, if you have a reward system that's worked with your kid or you disagree with us, which is absolutely fine, uh, yeah. send, us, send us that note. We, I, we're all about that discussion. It's no, no ego here. Um, I mean, well, maybe about the academic thing I just said, but just, uh, just let us know again, email us team at our kids play hockey or jump on the Facebook page, our kids play hockey. There's posts there. You can post anonymously on there also, which I know some of the listeners probably need to do, which is absolutely fine. Um, uh, and you can always DM us, uh, uh anywhere, whether you follow us at, uh, at we live dot hockey on Instagram or, or anything else. So Mike, this was a fun episode. I'm, we got through all the notes I had here. Um, and I want to thank the uh, the audience again for co- telling us to talk about this. It was a topic of the day. We jumped right on it. And um, yeah, thanks for doing that. Mike, any final thoughts before I close it up? No, no, it's a real, actually very thought provoking. I'm, I'm looking forward to like kind of digging into this more myself and, uh, you know, kind of just figuring out, you know, where is the line and, and what does work and what doesn't work? And can can we do it different ways and better ways and ways that, that, that can motivate today's uh, athletes? Mike, I know what's going to happen. You're going to go home and you're going to tell your kids, all right, we're doing this book reward system. You read 50 books. Mom and I get to go on a vacation. All right, we'll get out of your hair. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, look, actually, real quick, I got I got one more for you. And I'll let it go. Audience, sorry, I teased the ending, but I'm going to tell you this. I have a very good friend who has four sons, and he created an actual business, an LLC, and his four sons are aged 13 down to six, and they run a lawn business. In the summer and in the winter, they run a shoveling business. And I'm going to tell you right now, they make a ridiculous amount of money for that age. And they they buy their mom. I'm not kidding. They buy their mom and themselves a trip to Disney World every year based yeah. on the money that they make. And it's and they run the job. They do the work. They they I mean, obviously, everything outside the bank account, which I'm pretty sure he has them involved in, too. They run the day to day. Right. They earn their own money. Right. So just parents that's that's my my kind of again note here you, you your kids can do more than you think right earning potential earning is the key word here right make sure they earn these things not not just instant gratification based on uh well if you do this you get this right that's that's the life lesson all right that's going to do it for this edition of our kids play hockey uh season's here we're well into it we're going to be here with you all season we got some great guests lined up we got some great topics lined up we're going to be bringing on some hockey parents that have uh yeah, four plus kids in the sport. Our managers have full time jobs. Uh, we got some NHL people coming on the show soon. So stick with us all season. And as many of you have done, please share these episodes with your teams, whether it's in Team Snap or whatever it is that you use to communicate. Uh, share the episodes. Help us build that community because that really is the goal with our kids play hockey is to find that stain hockey community that are not hitting reps on the head with their hands in the middle of the games or doing something worse. That's going to do it for this one. Uh, with Mike Benelli, I'm Leo Elias. Thanks for watching or listening to Our Kids Play Hockey. See you next time, everybody. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. Make sure to like and subscribe right now if you found value wherever you're listening, whether it's a podcast network, a social media network, or our website, ourkidsplayhockey.com. Also, make sure to check out our children's book, When Hockey Stops, at whenhockeystops.com. It's a book that helps children deal with adversity in the game and in life. We're very proud of it. But thanks so much for listening to this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey, and we'll see you on the next episode.